What's up guys, Tim Little. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today's video, we are talking about fall bass fishing, soft plastic jerk baits. Favorite ways to rig them, favorite baits. Let's go. So last video, you guys had a ton of questions about the boat. Those of you guys that don't follow us on all of our other platforms, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, I did a pickup video of this guy right here. This is my new Skeeter FXR. Uh, very excited to have this. You know, a ton of comments in that video the, uh, last week about, you know, what happened with the champion, where's the champion going. Don't worry guys, it's not going anywhere. Uh, that boat has earned its spot in the garage. It's just getting old. I had to do some TLC to it. Uh, so I'm gonna be working on some things, some carpet, that sort of stuff. Uh, but as much as Matt and I travel, it's nice to be able to have things under warranty. Trailer, don't have to worry about changing trailer bearings as often. Uh, so very excited to finally purchase my first new bass boat. You know, I bought a tracker way, way, way back then. That was probably my first, that was my first ever new purchase but uh, very excited to be fishing off this platform. I'll be intermittently mixing in the Champion and the Skeeter, but uh, just picked it up uh, about a week and a half ago from Brig at Hennessy Outdoor Electronics. You guys can see he worked his magic up front and then back over here. Got the dual consoles as well, but an awesome platform to fish from. It's got the uh, padded deck very comfortable but uh, enough about that let's talk about soft plastic jerk baits and why you should be throwing them right now you know I did this video last year I also did a video in the spring why you should be throwing a, a jerk bait or a soft plastic jerk bait a fluke something like that in the spring well now the leaves are changing color we're getting colder nights water temps are starting to drop water levels are starting to uh, drop as well and we have more and more grass so let's talk about why you should be throwing one and then i have my four favorite rigs uh, the ways to rig them depending on the type of fishery and the species that you're going after so i guess we should cover what a fluke is or what a soft plastic jerk bait is and then we'll go from there because we have everybody that from be beginners to advanced uh, we'll cover it real quick. It is a soft plastic jerk bait. You can rig it in multiple ways, either Texas rig like that, rigged back into itself and then skin hooked, or like this right here, nose hook. We're gonna show you the benefits of each, but soft plastic jerk baits this time of the year, I mean, heck, they're kind of like a Senko. You could fish them year round, but right now is where they really start to shine. Like I said, the water levels are starting to drop. Those air temps are cooling, the water temps are cooling. That's gonna show you more and more grass lines. And with the water temps cooling, that means it's all about the bait fish. We covered that in a, uh, a bunch of videos in the last few weeks, but bait fish, fall bait fish is where it's at. So if you find the bait fish, you will find the bass. And a lot of times, this time of the year in grass fisheries they're pushing them to the very backs of coves areas where they can kind of corral them in and that's where you could take advantage of them with this guy right here so let's talk about that and then we'll change it up and we'll talk about how to take advantage or catch fish in like highland reservoirs deep clear water reservoirs spotted bass reservoirs that sort of thing so let's talk about the staple is this guy right here that is the Zoom Super Fluke. This is the Shiner color. I want to show you guys this. Not much to it, but what it does, it, or what it's used for, is to mimic a dying or fleeing bait fish. When you throw this out there and you're rip, 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 pause, it's shooting all over the place and then falling down or spiral, spiraling down like a dying bait fish and then you pop 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 get that thing alive again those fish just kind of come unglued and have to chase it 
So that is why this bait is so magical and why it works so well throughout the entire year. A couple other baits I grabbed for you. We're gonna talk about, I literally grabbed four for you. Uh, I wanna talk about this guy right there. That is the Yamamoto D Shad. Where this comes into play, well, I'm gonna cover a lot, a lot more about it in here in a little bit, but that's the D Shad. It is heavier than the Super Fluke. So if you're trying to fish down in standing timber or fish a little bit deeper, that is the bait you need to go with. Vice versa, if you are a guy that's throwing a fluke on the edges of grass lines or on the surface, this guy right here, this is the Z-Man. This is the, the Jerk Shads. What's cool about that, it's a Laztec material and it's high float. So it keeps that bait up close to the surface depending on the type of hook that you used. And then last but not least, we already showed you the, the Super Fluke. This is the Super Fluke Junior. Little baby guy. So if you're on a fishery where the fish are really keyed into smaller bait, that is where I put this guy on the end of my line. So that's it. Those are the four baits. Trying to keep it really simple for you. We've done a ton of videos in the past talking about how to rig them and all that sort of stuff, which we're going to cover a little bit here in this video. But um, I can link some of that stuff down below in the video description, some of those older videos. Um, but as I go through each like I said, I got four, each rigging system, I'll kind of show you it and I'll show you how to fish it. So now that we covered the baits, we simplified the baits, let's talk about the different four, the four different setups that I have for you guys here today. So number one, we'll go with this guy. This is rigged on a three-aught or four-aught super line hook, a, a more stout of a hook. The reason I have it hooked or rigged with that type of hook is it adds weight to the belly. You know, that heavier wire, heavier gauge hook adds weight to the bait. So it allows it to kind of get more uh, sporadic and it kind of acts as like a keel and then it kind of resets that bait and lets it dive down and do its thing. It falls a little bit quicker because of that, um, that little heavier center mass if that makes sense. So my basic fluke setup this time of the year is gonna be either a six foot 10 to a seven, seven foot two type of rod, something that I can twitch, like you're walking your top water bait or you're walking a frog, but you're rip, 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 pause. Rip, 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 pause. Those of you guys that have technique specific like jerk bait rods, those will work great. I typically throw mine braid to leader. I get a lot more sensitivity and castability with braid and then I put a mono or a fluorocarbon leader depending on which type of fishery, how clear the water is, the species I'm going after. In this case, I have a 12 pound mono leader. So this is your basic fluke setup, your basic soft plastic jerk bake setup. Cast it out there, let it kind of fall. It's gonna kind of ride itself with that, that super line hook and it's twitch, twitch, twitch. Twitch, 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 twitch. Let it fall. Twitch, twitch, twitch. Twitch, twitch, twitch. This thing is getting all sorts of erratic. It's looking like, let me throw it out here in front of you guys so you can guys can see. Come through the grass right here. Let it fall. I get to the little grass edge. I let it fall in. Boom, boom, boom. So what these bass are gonna do, they're gonna corral this bait into these little bays but they're also gonna ambush out of the grass line. So if you want to fish a, a, a jerk bait in, around, and through grass, this is the bait that you need to throw. Let it fall, you can let it fall. We're only in two and a half feet of water. It's super shallow. You can let it fall to the bottom, let that thing go. It's gonna come up and dance on the surface. You can also do just the boom, boom, boom. You don't have to do the twitch, 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 pause. You can do the rip, rip. And what that bait's doing is going choo, choo, choo. And it's just, again, it's mimicking the dying bait fish. One key tip that I want to explain to you guys, depending on where you rig the hook on this bait, 
the farther back it is, the farther you go in through the face when you're rigging this, the more even keeled it's gonna be and how it's gonna fall evenly. Does it make sense? But if you come in towards a little less, come out kind of the throat of the bait and rig this bait hook forward, if you're getting real erratic, that's gonna be a weight forward swim and this thing's gonna rip and then dive and fall. Rip, dive, and fall. So if you want a lot more movement, rig that bait with that hook forward. It's gonna get a lot more fall. You'll be able to fish it deeper with the Texas rig setup. <laughs> Twitched it, a bunch of bait just jumped out of the water. Real small bait. Okay, so that is that setup right there. That is your basic fall fishing, chasing fish in, around, through grass. That's the setup you guys need to be rigging. Let's go with this one. If you guys are on an awesome topwater bite, say you found them in the grass, you found them in mats, uh, and you want to give them a, something a little bit different that they haven't seen, this setup right here, you guys need to try out. Okay, that's that Jerk Shads by Z-Man. Again, a Laztec, straight 65 pound braid to a three aught or four aught super line hook. I'm throwing this on a medium heavy or heavy action rod, something you would throw, um, I'm sorry, power. Medium, heavy, heavy power rod, something with a kind of a fast action tip, something that you would throw like your frog on, something like that and you power fish this through the grass, over the grass. Get to the grass line, let it fall. What's special about this bait, because it is that Elastec material, like I said earlier, it's high float, so it keeps that bait high up in the water column near the uh, near the surface so I can fish this thing right where I would throw a frog I'm up on that grass line now I, I let it fall through a frog's not gonna fall through unless you're throwing like a horny toad or something let it fall twitch 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 back up on the surface I'm walking this thing over the grass I get to the edge, I'm letting it fall. Tunk. That's where you're gonna get your bite. Another time you're gonna get your bite is when you're working it real fast, like a doom, 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 doom. See that thing waking? I am working that thing side to side on the surface. It's skipping like a fleeing bait fish being chased. Again, I'll do this real quick for you guys. Twitch, 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 twitch. You can get this thing skipping, hopping, dancing all over the place. But again, it's weedless. If you have a base, a, a base, a bass follow, or you get to a hole in the grass, if you just pause your cadence, let that thing slow fall. Again, with that high float, if you do go with a heavy wire, a super line hook, that thing will just slowly fall down into those holes. And then when you do jack them, you're throwing it on a super line hook, straight braid, and you can get them out of the grass. Again, this is money for throwing over the tops and through grass. This time of the year, don't be afraid about going fast. Everything looks like a fleeing bait fish, and that's what you want to do. That's what you want to mimic. Now, for those of you guys that aren't necessarily fishing the backs of bays. Maybe you're fishing a main lake point. You're fishing clearer water. You're fishing smallmouth, spotted bass, largemouth in clearer water. This is the setup you need to be throwing. Again, four different types of baits, four different ways to rig them, four different ways to fish them. That is that Yamamoto D shad. And what you need for this You need some owner centering pins. 
either I like medium, I grab these smalls because that's for the next setup. So medium owner centering pins. And what these do, let me unhook this guy real quick. I thread that thing into the head or the face of the bait. Then I take my favorite, so, uh, favorite drop shot hook, finesse wide gap hook, and I run my hook through the bait and that centering pin keeper. That allows me to be able to cast this thing a lot farther, allows me to catch multiple fish on the bait without ripping the face of that bait off, without ripping that hook out of the face. So, a couple different scenarios. Like I said, clear water, a little bit deeper. I talked about this in the spring video, but if you take your favorite nail weight, your favorite Nico rig weight, and you cut little pieces off, you can thread that thing or push that thing right into the throat of the bait to get extra weight. With the extra weight, you get longer distance on your cast, but you get a bait that you can fish down in deeper depths. So if those fish aren't up on the surface coming up, blowing up, chasing shad, chasing bait fish, uh, this, is, this is the way that I like to rig this bait. And again, I go with that D-Shad because it's a, a more dense bait. It's heavier than the, the, the Elaztec or the Fluke, the Z-Man or the Fluke. I let this thing fall, and then again, it's just twitch, twitch. Twitch, twitch, twitch. Let it fall. Twitch, twitch, twitch. Twitch, twitch, twitch. Let it fall. The, what makes this bait special is not the erratic movement, but it's that dead kind of dying spiral fall that if you've ever seen a, a fish die in an aquarium, hopefully you haven't, but if you have, they kind of shoot all over the place and they fall. And they shoot all over the place and then they fall. Maybe you've been out on the lake and you've seen a dying bait fish or something like that, but I just got bit uh, every time. So twitch, 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 then let it fall. You're, again, you're really, you're not worried about that exposed hook catching on anything because you're not really around, you're not fishing over the grass or through the grass like you were with the other setups. Uh, now you're fishing open water, you're fishing main lake points, you're fishing treetops, stuff like that, where those fish are gonna suspend and uh, you're presenting this dying bait fish action to them, okay? Hopefully, that is simple enough for you guys to understand. I, I will grab a, uh, a centering pin just so you guys can see these and show you how to rig them. You cannot get too erratic with these types of baits, especially this time of the year. As you get into the colder water temps, the colder months, you gotta slow down your cadence. Uh, but right now you can get as erratic and as fast and as, as erratic as you want to be. grab one of these centering pins for you. Grab the medium size. I got one more setup that takes advantage of schooling bass. This time of the year, those fish like to school up and chase the bait balls. Okay, here's that owner centering pin. Again, we'll link everything down below in the video description. You take the face of your favorite soft plastic jerk bait. You push this in and twist it all the way in. And I like to twist it all the way in so that the loop on the very end is actually in the bait. That way, when you go to hook your bait on, you can actually go through the bait, through the, the loop, and then through the top of the bait. Now, your bait is on there and stuck. A lot more fish catches, the bait's gonna last a lot longer, and you're not gonna have, you go through nearly as many baits. Now, last but not least, show you these guys real quick. This is one of my favorite rigs to fish this time of the year. You guys have probably heard of, or maybe you haven't, the donkey rig, the double fluke rig. Where this bait shines 
is on schooling fish. I don't know how many times I've been out on a main lake point fishing for suspended spotted bass or even spotted bass that are down in 20 or 30 feet on bottom and all of a sudden they shoot to the surface and start blowing up. It could be 10 fish, it could be five fish, 10 fish, 20, 50 fish. Uh, where this really shines is that exact scenario. Now you can see, I haven't talked about this rig, rigged like this before on the channel. I showed you guys last year how to rig the donkey rig, uh, Texas rig, and nose hook. But these are actually those super fluke juniors, the smaller bait fish. So I use eight pound fluorocarbon, and then I use a size number one, either finesse wide gap or one of my favorite drop shot hooks. Again, that's a smaller, that's the super fluke junior. When they're on that smaller bait, it can be super frustrating because you're throwing a, a, a normal size fluke or a normal size top water and you have to downsize to real small baits to even get a bite. You gotta match the hatch, but that's where these guys shine. So I'm gonna run you guys through this setup real quick. Main line is 20 pound braid. The first thing I do is I put a bobber stop on here. Let me grab, I'll show you one, what those are. You just run your line through one of these wires and you slide the bobber stop on. What that does, that allows your second line that's coming off of your main line, it allows a little bit of play, but it doesn't allow this thing to slide all the way up. When you're casting, it slides all the way up your line because that'll affect your distance and it just becomes a pain trying to manage too long you know, of a leader. So I usually leave that bobber stop about an inch or two above the next, well, about an inch or two above. Then I take a swivel. I run that through my main line and then I tie a second swivel on the edge of the braid. The end of the braid, that's what I tie to the swivel. So I have bobber stop, free floating swivel, tied to a swivel. Then I have an 18 inch leader, rigged just like I showed you prior with the uh, centering pin and the, the hook. And then I have another line, two to three feet, that's gonna run behind it. Now what makes this thing magical is the way that it looks in the water. And hopefully I can get this thing to, to, to work for you this close to the boat. Keep it up on surface. Just soft twitch, 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 twitch. Can you guys see those baits? Working in unison, but separate. It's got two different baits going different directions. So if you're on, you find yourself in that scenario where you got those schooling fish and you're trying to catch them, or maybe you don't, maybe you're just fishing, but you want to mimic a set of fleeing bait fish, that is where this combo is magical. You know, those baits are just going separate directions. It just really keys in those fish into it's time to chase, right? It tells those fish, oh, those fish are fleeing. I'm going to eat them. So this setup, I typically throw it on a spinning rod. It's easier to manage. You could throw it on a light bait caster, but I like to throw it on a spinning rod. Specifically, this one right here. This is the Orochi Ronin. It's a six foot eight rod, so it's a lot shorter than a lot of my other spinning rods, but I can cast, I get the distance, especially with that braided line, but it's easier to walk with that shorter rod tip. You know, sometimes for me, it's hard to walk with a spinning setup because it's completely opposite than I do with a bait caster, but that's why this Ronin works so well. The reason, that I have it rigged like this. So I talked about matching the hatch, going smaller baits. The reason that I like to throw this setup, you can throw this setup Texas rigged, but the reason I like to throw it with the exposed hook, the nose rig, the first hook set is easy. You're walking this thing, you get bit, you set, now you're playing the fish. You get bit again, it's really hard to set when you already have a fish. Uh, with that exposed second hook, 
that fish that you're fighting and that other fish that eats it kind of sets the hook for you. Um, now, one thing you can do that I've played around with in the past, taking my, my farther back bait, my longer leader, and I could put the Texas rig hook on there and a full size jerk bait, and then up front do smaller with the nose hook. That works really well as well. Uh, most of the time, that back bait gets eaten first, and then if you guys have ever caught a spot or schooling fish, when you hook one, usually they bring the school with them, so that's where that second bait really takes advantage. So much fun when you can catch them two at a time. Guys, I will link all these products down below in the video description. Like I said, I really simplified it for you, but I really think, I really highly recommend throwing some kind of soft plastic jerk bait right now. Again, with the grass showing itself being more apparent, those real visible grass lines, working that jerk bait around those grass lines, around those isolated pieces of cover, that's where you're gonna take advantage and catch some amazing fish right now. Those water temps, pay attention to your nights, those cooler nights, those water temps are gonna start dropping and look for those bait fish. Guys, I will link all these products down below in the video description, the different setups, the different rigging, all that stuff will be down there. And uh, if you guys have any questions, please leave those in the comment section. I will try to get to those as soon as possible. Hopefully you guys got to see how to work those different baits, you know, see where they would really shine on your fisheries. Uh, you know, pond fishermen, bank fishermen, that Texas rig fluke on, a, on straight braid or that uh, Elaztec, that, um, jerk shads those are winners you don't have to worry about throwing the light leader line you can get around the grass or around the bushes whatever you're fishing through and around that is key you highland lowland reservoir fishermen clear water offshore fish give that nose hook rig that nose hooked rig a shot and i don't think you guys will be disappointed guys if you learned something from this video you like this video give us a thumbs up hit that subscribe button and we will see you guys on the next video